I'm going to show you my 10 favorite developer tools that I've been using in my daily workflow when coding websites. They're a combination of CLIs, IDE packages, as well as software that literally save me both time and mental energy. Starting with number 10, we have self-hosted large language models. Olama is my first example, since it's the easiest to download and get up and running. A self-hosted LLM is one that allows you to run the models on your own computer. And Olama makes this as easy as possible. It comes with a chat GPT-like interface. It downloads a open AI model to start off with, but you can also select other ones like from Google or DeepSeek or Quen. If you want to run your own models, but want something more advanced than Olama, then LM Studio is my next favorite. It's developer friendly, lets you run up your own a local host server on a custom port and has downloadable models that you can search for based on popularity, ranking, or even just a releases on Hugging Face. And right now I'm using Vercel's AI toolkit and it allows me to connect up LM Studio directly to it to build my own application with code that would be very familiar to using an API from something like OpenAI or Anthropic. And it's because of this that LM Studio is one of my favorite tools at this time. Finally, I have Jan. It's an AI model that you can also run locally, but it's also one of the smallest and smartest models I've seen to date. The Jan V1 model is 4 billion parameters and only 2.3 gigabytes, which means that most computers should be able to run it. It's blistering fast. At around 130 tokens per second, it can reason, tool call, and run MCP servers. And I even use it in LM Studio Studio since it's such a good model to use overall. Let's move on to number nine. This developer tool I'm finding myself using more often. It's coding CLIs, specifically AI ones that have agents running in the background to complete different types of tasks. Gemini CLI is my first recommendation because it comes with a free tier and has one of the most powerful models out there, Gemini 2.5 Pro. It's able to call MCP servers, it's able to run concurrently with multiple versions in the same instance, and it can produce pretty good results if you know how to prompt it properly. The next CLI I recommend is Claude Code. It comes with a number of features built in from Anthropics models, which make it play quite well with things like a cursor, which is the main IDE I use it inside of. Claude Code now lets you run sub agents, which are automatically assigned by Claude Code itself. It's able to create a to-do list with tasks that allow you to go through and build features pretty well. And I've started using it more often than the sidebar chat that I used to use since it seems to have a larger context when building out ideas or apps. Number eight is Vibe Coding Websites. These are powerful websites that help you build ideas in next to no time since they have the models running in the background on their own ecosystem. My first recommendation is Lovable. I've been using and playing around with Lovable since it was released. And honestly, it's great, especially when you're trying to MVP out an idea, you're trying to create a startup or conceptualize what a certain application or website might look like. Another top contender is Bolt.new. Very similar to Lovable, it helps you vibe code out ideas. And often I like to run a Lovable and Bolt.new in parallel to see what sorts of results I get with both. It really depends on your preference, but I would suggest using both just to get an idea of how they work. Just be aware that a Lovable currently doesn't allow you to edit unless you upgrade to a paid plan, whereas Bold.new lets you use the code editor as well as even download your entire project as a zip file. Moving on to number seven, I want to take a look at AI agents. This is a dev tool that I can't live without. A VS Code has a copilot built in, which is my first example, with most models available, and I'm going to showcase how I normally go about using it. I normally start in ask mode, where I ask the agent to plan out how to implement a certain feature before I move into agent mode, and this is the part where it actually starts implementing that feature. The benefits over using a terminal CLI is that here you get revision. It feels easier to go back in history and ask the agent to do different tasks, especially if it gets something wrong. Another AI agent tool that I really like using is Cline, spelled C-L-I-N-E. It's actually pretty easy to install. It's inside of VS Code or any coding terminal through extensions and just search up Cline. Here you connect it up to your own API keys and it works with any model, but the info infrastructure is a little bit better when it comes to things like planning and running the agent. It keeps track of all your tokens and how many are being used. And this way you can see exactly how much you're paying in terms of API costs when you're utilizing it. I've also found it superior when it comes to things like planning exactly how it'll implement a feature, including things like adding very nice visuals and diagrams and reverting to previous historical examples. However, when it comes to AI agents, Cursor actually gives you the tools to have some of the best agents available. Even an ask agent and background mode all available inside of the ID, which can run in parallel. Pretty cool. 
and the background agent can run outside of the ID, making changes directly to your GitHub project, though for me, this is sometimes a little bit too risky. I really like to be able to have a very fine control over versions and what changes, and this allows me to review every file and every change, revert back at any point in time, or just redo the checkpoint if I'm happy with the changes the agent made. So far, we've looked at a lot of AI and development tools, but one thing that developers definitely need is better skills in design. So here are some design tools that I use often Often that definitely helped me as a developer. First is Tailwind CSS. This is probably my favorite CSS framework because it makes writing styles so easy. On top of that, it's integrated with most things like Next.js as well as Vite. And you'll find that most React content is often using Tailwind CSS as part of the way to style components, especially now that style components is going into maintenance mode. Next is ShadCN. It's a component library built on top of React, which utilizes small components that you can build on top of things like Next.js, React Router, Astra, or more. These components are just small reusable components that are easily styled and just look beautiful in terms of how they're laid out. You'll often find that AI tools like to use ShadCN components along with Tailwind CSS, which makes these tools extremely developer and AI friendly, especially when it comes to designing websites. And ShadCN is built on top of a lot of Radix components. These are components made to work on any web browser and mobile device in a very similar manner that just simply work. You'll find Radix is kind of like the Tailwind CSS of components. And when you put them together, you get these things called primitives, which are all sorts of things such as dialogues, dropdowns, sliders, and more. What's useful is that whenever you need a feature, rather than building it from scratch, you can simply pull it from the Radix library or even just use the ShadCN version, which is a little bit more UI friendly. If you're actually interested in what makes website design look good, then I've put together this design for developer course. It's over 400 pages teaching you everything from color theory, to topography and video content in a visually stimulating way that just makes it interesting to learn the content at your own pace. You can find it in the description of the video under Enhance UI Teach Me Design, and it's just a nice way to support the channel. The fifth development tool I find myself using is V0 from Vizel. If I ever need to mock up a quick component or a feature in isolation, V0 definitely provides some really cool features that I just haven't seen other AI tools be able to do. They have a design mode where I can select any element and see exactly what a the styling and design is of that item. A lot of the content made online on V0 by the community is shared, which means you can get a lot of inspiration for different things you might want to build. Another AI design tool I use is a Reloom. It's able to create different types of wireframes and even now a website designs in just a matter of moments using AI prompting. First, it generates a sitemap with all the content and sections. Then it generates a wireframe from that sitemap with the sections actually filled out with content. And finally, you can go through and preview an actual design of what the end result should look like. It also has a style guide and it allows you to export directly into React components or even into Figma. The next developer tool that I'm often using is a no code website builders and specifically Wix Studio, which I've been using for the last number of years since it was released. I've made hundreds of sites on their platform and the process of building them is extremely simple. As a low code, no code website builder, I still have access to do things like add code, for example, JavaScript or APIs, but I can also connect it up to GitHub, access it in VS Code and much more. But realistically, what I'm using Wix Studio most for is just the quick ease of use that it is when I'm just simply dragging and dropping different elements, checking different types of websites and making changes. What makes Wix Studio special is that everything's built in from analytics to contact forms, a CMS for your own blog with articles that you can publish at any point. Even if you have an online course you want to publish like I do, it can be added easily and quickly, which means that you don't have to spend hours, days or even weeks trying to code something from scratch. And of course, it can connect up to MCP servers and a lot more if you want to automate it with AI these days. The next few developer tools are NPM packages, which I'm always utilizing in my projects these days. The first one is AI SDK from Vercel. It's an open source library to be able to connect up your favorite AI models to whatever web app or application you're building. And this simply means I can connect up to OpenAI, Anthropic, or Google models in just two or three lines of code. Another package from Vercel I'm using is AI Elements. It gives you a number of components 
as building blocks to replicate the popular chatbots like ChatGPT, Claude, and Grok, where you can use them as simple UI blocks and then customize them to work for your own application. This makes starting to build an AI application much easier, especially since you don't have to build everything from scratch. Instead, you can use these pre-made message components, prompt input components, and they simply work and are easy to integrate into your own app. Another tool I'm using is React Flow. It allows you to create these 2D canvases where you can add nodes in that can be customized and they can also connect together with these edges. This allows for a more dynamic UI that you've often seen in things like Langflow, Make.com, or even Zapier. This package is React friendly, it's easy to customize, and it's one of the coolest things I've seen online if you want to create a Figma-like experience. Another package I like is Code Mirror. It's a code editor that you can have in the browser, and there are long running packages that has over a thousand commits and has some really cool features. Since I use React, I'm using the React version of Codemira, which literally just comes in as a single component you can import with all the features and extensions that you might need if you want to get it up and running. The next developer tools I'm using are the extensions inside my IDE. As mentioned previously, I like Klein since it's very good at being an agent that just completes tasks the way I want. I also use auto close tag, which allows my tags to automatically close whenever I'm making any changes inside of my code. So here I can create a div and it automatically creates the closing tag for that div. Same for up here where I can create a section tag and the closing tag for that section is created. Another example of this is auto rename tag. It's another extension that pretty much does the same thing but for renaming tags. For example, I've got this div tag here and if I rename it to section, the closing tags section is also added so that it just makes life a lot easier for me whenever I'm renaming any tag. Another extension I often use is live server, which allows me to create a a temporary live server or whatever HTML page I'm using. This just makes it easier if I'm not using something like Next.js, if I just want to view a index.html page without having to run up a web server manually for it. Inside of Cursor, I'm using Claude Code for VS Code. And yes, I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous. I'm also using Echo API for VS Code. And this again is for Cursor, allowing me to have a interface very similar to what Postman offers, which allows me to do API calls. These are API calls like get, post, put, and delete, which is necessary for any type of application you're probably building whenever you create an API. We finally made it to number one, the most important resource that any developer uses when they're building applications or websites, your IDE or Integrated Development Environment. First on my list is a VS Code. VS Code has come a long way. If you visit their website, you'll notice they've rebranded completely. And now they're fully integrated with AI features that are entirely free, even without a GitHub account. So you can start using things like GitHub Copilot immediately as soon as you install the application. This shift in focus for AI means that GitHub Copilot is one of the most powerful now. It has everything integrated from an ask agent and edit mode to MCP integration and even ways to attach contacts, whether it's through a file, a URL or more. And while VS Code has been making strides in terms of their Copilot, there's one feature that hasn't worked exactly the way I like, which is their autocomplete. When it comes to this, there is another ID I prefer to work inside of, and that is Cursor, the original AI coding editor. It was released as a clone of VS Code and customized, but they have some magic source that does something that I haven't seen other code editors do quite well. And that is using AI to do inline code autocomplete. It's probably my favorite feature and what keeps me coming back to cursor as opposed to using VS Code all the time. And it means that whatever I'm doing, whether it's writing a new line of code, writing in some classes or changing some JavaScript, the intent of what I'm trying to do is always captured and completed for me. So I don't have to manually write out every single character on that line. Cursor, of course, does have a pretty good AI chat and agent on the side, and it has features that I haven't seen in others, like the max mode, which increases the context for different types of content you're changing. But I don't utilize this as much because it often comes out to be quite an expensive endeavor, and I'm always trying to save on token usage. 